Slides is a really cool Google tool. Do you have to have a Google account in order to use it? Absolutely, you do. Uh, what if you don't have one? Well, then you need to create one, okay? <laughs> you need to create one. They're uh, free. And you, then you have full, full rights to all of the Google tools and um, you can use them and you can show them to your students and you can share with and you can do all kinds of things. And here's the thing, you can actually show things to your students and they don't have to have a Google account. You can have them preview something, which means they can look at it, but they don't have to have a Google account. Now, do I think they should have a Google account? Absolutely. Here we go. This is a link. Now this is an HTTPS colon slash slash, okay? So um, that just makes it a secure socket. So, and most, most uh, websites are going that way now and Bitly actually just did about three weeks ago. They, they became secure instead of unsecure, which is with the HTTP. So Bitly, B-I-T dot L-Y, slides, the number two, the letter V, okay? Uh, this is a preview. So this will allow you to view the slides deck off to the side if you wish. And as I make changes on the slides deck, you'll see it happen. This is a live, this is a dynamic handout. And right now I know that nobody's in here because I don't see any little icons showing up with uh, anonymous acrobat or something like that. So when you come into, if you share something in, in preview mode, and yes, I will be showing you how to do that, but uh, later. Once you share something in preview mode, um, you don't have to worry about updating your copies all the time because it's a dynamic, it's a live deck. So as soon as you come into the deck, as soon as you see it, as soon as you view it, you're going to see all of the changes that I make to it. All right. And here we go. Next slide. This is me. I, my name is Melinda Holt. I'm a PS2 with a OTAN. I'm a tech, in technology integration. Um, I am a Google certified educator, trainer. I've been a trainer for, I think, five years or something like that. That's why I get the little T. Um, I'm also an, um, a certified admin, Google admin. And um, I'm a COAB applied digital skills trainer. Woohoo! So those are my certifications. Whoopsie do. Um, and here we go with the handout. You're going to see um, a bunch of words. <laughs> it's a table of contents. Here's another thing you can do with the slides deck you can make it an ebook. This is an ebook. So each one of these links, or each one of these lines of text right here, is a link. So if I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and hit present. And you don't have to be in presentation mode, but if you're in the preview mode, if you're a student and you're in the preview mode and you've done section one, two, and three, and now you want to get on with section four, you can actually select the section that you want to go to, and this will go to customizing page setup. Okay, now on this handout, the buttons up at the top that tell you what slide you're on, they go back to the TOC. You don't have to be in presentation mode for this to work. I can do, go right back to adding a slide. And because I'm the owner, I see where it says slide 18, add slide, and I can click that link. Um, so if you did go onto the slides deck, if you opened it out or opened it up, this is probably you. It is not gonna say Will Nederson because what I did was I shared it in preview mode to anybody. So Google's not gonna keep your name, all right? I don't know who this is. This could be Will, this could be Marjorie, this could be Anthony, this could be Susan, this could be anybody. Okay, so it's about the fourth slide in, okay? Now I get a different view. This is the thing, you're in preview mode. You don't get to, um, you don't get to go, you don't get to see the view that I'm in right now. You don't get to see the slides on the left-hand side. You don't get to see the file edit view up at the top. You don't get any of the menu items. You can't copy this. I've taken that away, all right? So the TOC, the table of contents, 
is um, on page or slide five, all right? And then after that, all of the other slides will link back to the TOC, okay? So the TOC is right here. If you're on the preview, you can click on any one of those. And yes, if you already know about how to create a presentation, you could absolutely go to manipulating objects or changing page setup. You don't have to follow along with me. If you're, if you're more advanced than what I'm, what I'm doing right now, then you could do this. And I will be showing you how to create an ebook. It's really simple to do. And most people miss the, the one step that you need. Right here is the second page of the table of contents, okay? Um, and then what are slides? Some, some people don't know what slides are, so I have to go over that. All right, so for the purpose of this handout, slides is an app. It's an application. It's a tool. Slides is an app within G Suite, so you can create presentations, flashcards, timelines, and a bunch of other activities. You can use it in any browser, but it works best with Chrome. It can be installed on any smart device. You can put it on a, a phone, you can put it on a tablet, and you can put it on a laptop or a desktop if you wish. The word slides, presentation, and deck are interchangeable when you're using Google. So those three words, if I say slides, I'm, I'm or deck or presentation, I'm using the same, uh, it's the same word for everything. Some things that you can do with slides, presentations like this one, an ebook like this one. You could do branching. You can actually create a slide, five slides, let's say, and have number two go to number five and have number one go to number four, depending on the answer that the student gives. If we have time, I will show you that. It is in the handout though. Here are some terms to know. You need to know that a deck is a file created within the slides app deck or slides app. And an object is anything on a slide. Anything on a slide. Anything on a slide. That includes pictures. That includes text. That includes buttons. Anything on a slide is an object. And objects can be manipulated. Okay? Um, here's some guidelines to use, just some quick little uh, tips, okay, um, when you're using form or the formatting tool or when you're really getting into slides. Now, I'm, I've gone through this pretty fast, okay. Um, you can always come back to it. So you can open up slides in a lot of different ways. If you're already signed into Google, the quickest and easiest way, if you get on your computer and you go, oh, I want to create that slides deck, blah, 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 because you got this really cool idea, right? All you have to do is type in Chrome, you have to have Chrome open, you're going to type slides.new, slides.new, or you can type slides.google.com. Most people already know this way right here where they type drive.google.com, then you select the new button and create a new blank deck, a blank presentation. Um, through Slides Home, slides at google.com, you can uh, find the template. So I'm gonna show you these three ways. I'm gonna hit a new tab on my Chrome. So I'm hitting the plus sign way up the top, okay? I am going to type in the Omnimox or the address bar. I'm going to type drive.google.com. I could have also used the waffle and selected the drive icon. Okay, so here I am at drive. When underneath the drive button, you're gonna select that and then select Google Slides. That's one way to create. Another way to create is to go back up to the Omnibox or the address bar, if you will. I'm gonna use the same one that I had drive open, slides.google.com. On this page, you're not gonna see the drive button, all right? But all of the slides that you create are in Drive. When you go to slides.google.com, it's just showing you the slides. It's not showing you your docs, it's not showing you your forms, it's not showing you your sheets, it's just showing you your slides. So if you don't want to see the Drive, you don't have to. 
you can go to slides.google.com. By the same token, you can go to sheets.google.com or drive.google.com or forms.google.com. Each one of those is an app. And because each one of these is, each one of the Google tools is an app, it has its own place on the web, its own bubble, let's say. Okay, so this is the slides.google.com area. Here are all of the slides that I've created. Up at the top of this area, you're going to see a really cool thing called templates. Templates is part of the handout. Um, when you hit the template gallery up at the top, you'll see a bunch of different templates going through. Okay, to get back to where all of my presentations are, I have to hit the arrow up at the top of the screen where it says template gallery. So if you have more than one account, and I do, I have a G Suites EDU account with SCOE.net. I have my own personal account um, as a trainer, and I have a personal account as just a personal know nothing self. I sign into all of them, and how do I figure out, okay, this is my, um, I have a different picture for, for my different selves, so I know who the heck I am. So right here, when I see that green background behind me, I know that I'm in my personal trainer account. So when I click it, I can see there I am, scoeytech at gmail.com. Here are the other accounts that I have accessed, um, and if I want to, if I've signed into all of them, I can select that other entity. So here I am, Sacramento County, okay? And here are the different slides that I've created with Sacramento County Office of Education. If I wanna go back to my public account, then I would select that. So you just have to make sure you look at that picture. If you have a different picture for each of your different selves, Bev, you're gonna know who you are. And that's how you switch between the two. How do you get the to template gallery? You go to slides.google.com, slides.google.com. You type that in the address bar or the omni bar, whatever you want, boom. It'll take you right here. On this page, you're gonna see all of the slides that you've created. And if you've only got a few, that's fine. If you don't have any, that's okay too. Um, up at the top on the right, right hand side, you're going to see the word template gallery and you're going to select that. Okay. And then it just drops down and you see all of the templates that you have access to. As soon as you click one, it's yours. So don't click it unless you want it because you're going to, Oh, look, what's this look like? Oh, what's that look like? Oh, what's this one over here? Every time you click on any of these, you're going to get a recipe book or a lesson plan or a photo album in your uh, list of uh, presentations and they're yours. Now you can delete them after you do that. I made that mistake because I went in and I looked at all the templates and then I went, when I went back to my slides area, I'm going to click this arrow where it says template gallery. When I went back here, I had all of those uh, presentations in my list. So I was like, ah, what are the advantages, disadvantages of slides.google.com? This is just a quick and easy way of getting to your, your slides, of seeing just your slides. So, because now I don't have to go through, oh man, this is a doc, this is a form. No, that's oh, I, all I want are my slides. And yes, you could do a search on your Google Drive, but what better way to see just your slides? I don't have to go through folders. I don't have to do anything like that. It's right here for me. Can you have two accounts open at the same time? Absolutely. Um, as long as your, your club, your school allows it, Jacqueline. So I am the administrator. <laughs> Um, semi-administrator now for our uh, our EDU. So I get to go back and forth between uh, my accounts because I've allowed it. So if your school only wants you to be signed in at one at a time, you might try opening up a new Chrome window and seeing if you can sign in with your personal self on that other Chrome window. If that's allowed, boom, you got it. Okay. I've already gone over to, to get to the template gallery. That's through slides.google.com. Okay, so we just went to Drive and we went to slides.google.com. Another way to create a slides deck without even opening either one of these is to do slides.new. You can do this for a doc, a sheet, or a form. Slides.new, when you type that in and hit enter, 
it creates a new slides deck for you. As soon as you create a new slides deck, the first thing you should do is title it. Google doesn't care what you title your untitled presentation. You can create 50 untitled presentations. Google doesn't care because the address, the web address way up the top, that is the name of your file. You can title it anything you want, but this up here in the Omnibar, that's what the real name or the real title, I'm gonna say, of the file is. So the first thing you should do so that you know what this is, is to title it so you can find it later. So I'm gonna type OTAN demo, okay? It automatically opens up to a blank template. So if you went to slides.new, good for you. Um, if you use one of the templates when you're in the template gallery, that's okay too, but you're gonna see something a little different. Might not match up with what I'm saying. Just saying, you might, you might wanna consider opening up a slides.new. On the right-hand side, whenever you create a new slides deck, the way I just told you, um, is you're going to get a themes area on the far right-hand side. And as you scroll down, so you can click through the themes to get an idea of what they look like, what that first slide is going to look like anyway. Okay, if you want to see what the rest of the slides in that theme look like, everyone look at your screen right now. I want you to, because you're going to have to focus a little bit. <laughs> Okay, so on the far left-hand side of your screen, there's a little slides home button. Don't click that. Wait for, wait for me to tell you when to click, okay? There's a slides home button. Underneath the slides home button, there is a plus sign. Don't click that either. Next to the plus sign is a drop-down arrow. That is what I want you to click. So let me show you. Let me see if I can zoom in here a little bit. So right here, this is the little guy you want to click on. And I'm not sure this is coming out for you because I've never done this in Zoom before. All right, so it's the little icon next to the, uh, the plus sign on the left-hand side. So I'm gonna click that. There are all the different slides for this theme, okay? Uh, this one's a little green with a little, little uh, image on it. This one is brown. Boom. This is the one I want. For those of you that are advanced, for those of you that understand master slides, I'm going to show you something. For the rest of you, just chill. Okay, this is an advanced topic that I'm going to try and, and show the advanced folks. So if you understand master slide and master slide deck, this is what you're going to want to do if you want to change your slide deck. You're gonna to go to slide, edit master. You can also go to view master. Either one will take you to the same area. Okay, so it's slide, edit master, or view master. I'm gonna to go to view master. Here are all the master slides. Now, because we were on that first slide, this is the one that came up, all right? Um, if you go to the very top, you're going to see the master. So if you want your, your font not to be whatever it was, but maybe you want it to be Verdana, okay? Once you change that on your master slide, it will change for every other slide will be Verdana, okay? If you want to change one of the layouts in the master, you can go and say, okay, yeah, this is pretty cool. Um, but I don't want this color. Or these, oh, this is a pretty nice uh, graphic, but I don't want them to be that color. I want them to be this color. Okay, so you can change that. And when you change it on the master, it changes it on all of the slides that you, that you, uh, that you add to your deck that have this template, that have this layout. Okay? All right, so... I'm gonna go back to my slides deck by using the left pane, the little number one here, boom. And then I'm going to add a slide underneath the slides icon, the plus sign. Uh, it added a blank, that was nice. I don't want a blank. <laughs> I wanna choose uh, next to the plus sign. I want to choose the one that I just changed. See, there's that little yellow instead of the brownish. 
all right? Because I changed it and it will be, it will remain that way. So I can create five, six slides with this template. If I want the template to change, I can go back into my master slides deck. I can maybe even make, create a copy of it and then have instead of the yellow drips going down, I could have blue drips or green drips, whatever I want, okay? Are slides and themes the same? I have a slide and want to use a template after I create it. You can create your own templates. Um, you would have to save it though in your slides app area or in your drive. Uh, you can't add templates to the Google templates on your public account and you cannot add templates to your club or your EDU area without having it approved by your uh, network administrator. So Jacqueline, I think that that answered your question. So if I want to, I've just changed this theme, right? I've changed the template on it because what I did is I made this yellow drip instead of the brownish fading drips. Okay, so if I want to save this as a template, I would save it to home. Now, we're going to create an ebook from this. I'm going to go to the first slide and I'm going to type ebook. Okay. Um, and I'm going to delete this one right here. So, an ebook, a book has a table of contents, right? So, we're going to create a table of contents. We're going to type the word um, what? What are we going to type the word on? Well, first we have to know what our slide's about. What is this ebook going to be about? Maybe it's about creating shapes. Okay. So on creating shapes, so we're going to, we're going to type uh, create square. And then under that, we're going to create circle. And then under that, we're going to create triangle. This is just to give you an idea of how a TOC works. Now these words, you're going to want to make them smaller because you're going to want, um, or the font size smaller. Uh, you're going to want to be able to move it over to the right, maybe have two columns. You know, you can do it any way you want. It's up to you. You're the creator of it. So we have a create square, create circle, create triangle. These have nowhere to go yet because I haven't created the create square slide and I haven't created the create circle slide. All I've created is the TOC, what I'm calling the TOC. So I have to add three new slides. I have to add three new slides for each one of these pages that I want this ebook to go to. All right, here we go. I'm going to go to next to the plus sign. I'm going to go to the arrow. And I'm going to have a title with two and two columns. Boom. And up at, there we go. So that's my first slide. I'm only going to create one right now. And I want the title of the slide to match the TOC. And the TOC was create square. Okay. Over here, I would have instructions on how to create square. And then over here, instead of the text box, you can do this a bunch of different ways. Again, you're the creator. You get to decide. Um, my model for me, what works for me is to have the instructions on the left and then a picture on the right. Okay. So if I'm going to put a picture on the right, I don't need this text box. So I'm going to click it and I'm going to delete it. When you have instructions, you probably want to have them. You know, you've got step one, step two, step three, and you also want to make sure they're in order because your students will let you know if you've done something wrong, <laughs> right? All right. So um, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. See, I get to manipulate all these objects. These are all objects right here. Something else, because this is an object, because I'm thinking of it as an object, not text, it's an object. When I select it, I see lines around it. That's a square. And objects can be colorized. Objects can be colorized. So up at the top of your, your screen, underneath the menu, underneath the words, you're going to see little icons. 
Okay, the little icons are very important, especially this one right here, fill color. Okay, when you select an object and you select this paint bucket, you can make the object any color you want. Now it'd be a good idea to kind of follow your theme. All right, uh, all of your theme colors, Google populates it for you. All of your theme colors are down below the, uh, all the bright colors above. You've got a lot of choices, but it's, it's really a good idea to stay in touch with your theme. Uh, too many colors, it leads the eye away and it's just, it makes for a bad presentation. Okay, something else, because you've selected an object, all objects have format options. This is really, really important when we get to the point of creating a drawing, all right? And drawing is really powerful because you can do so much with your own drawings. But every object that you create or that's on your slide has a format option. On the top of your menu bar, you're gonna see the word format options. I'm hovering my mouse over it right now, going back and forth. You'll even say it, see it, see uh, format options. Okay, that's a button. When you click it, you're gonna get a box of all kinds of magic. Most people don't know this magic exists. It's yours for free, okay? So each one of these areas, the size, rotation, position, text fitting, drop shadow, reflection, you can do this on this object. Different objects have different options. Different objects have different options. So um, on this object, I can do all of these things. On another object, when I open up format options, I might get different things that I can do, or I might get less, okay? So right here, what I usually do, if I wanna set things apart a little bit or, or make it look um, a little 3D-ish, is I'll put a drop shadow. I don't know if you can see that, but it does it automatically, okay? When I select the object, I get my tools back. When I deselect the object, the tools go away. The bar stays. I'm gonna select the object again. There's a drop down arrow next to drop shadow. So I'm gonna select that. And you might wanna watch this um, because it's hard to explain. There are little squares, ah, there it is, in line. And I know you can't see this and I can't make it to where you can see it because I can hardly see the darn thing myself, <laughs> okay? So there are sliders on here. And as you, you can barely see the little line and as soon as I, um, I get the cross arrows here, I know that I've, I'm on the line with the transparency, okay? Or I know I'm on the line with the distance. Now I'm gonna blow this out. I'm gonna show you what the distance does. Do you see how far that went out on my object? Okay, it blew it out. Now, the angle is also really cool on when you're doing shadows. So I can, I can drag this around and it goes all the way around. I just gotta figure out which angle I want it at. Normally, uh, I went about 45. There it goes, it goes off to the side. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but as I'm dragging it to the right and to the left, the angle bar, as I'm dragging it, it's, I want it, oh man, it's 47, oh, it's 58, oh, ah. If I want it to be 45 exactly, everyone look at your keyboard and you're gonna see your, the arrow keys down, at, mine is on a number keypad. So I have arrow keys that go to the right, to the left, up and down, right? I know that my little, my uh, crosshair is on the, uh, it's selected the angle bar, all right? So now I can use those arrows to go exactly one degree to the right or one degree to the left, however I'm selecting, okay? And by doing that, you have more control. It is for artistic purposes, yes, Susan, but how does this help with teaching and learning? Think flashcards, okay? When, you, when we get into the draw part of it, you'll understand a little bit, it'll make sense. Okay, <laughs> I need to show you this though in order to get to that part. We need to do part one before we can get to part two. Um, this distance is too, too far out there. Um, there we go, the blur radius. 
you know, that just softens it a little bit. So you can maybe a project with your students, you could have them put in their, um, their picture and then put a frame around it. Okay. They would actually, um, and then soften it up a little bit. Okay. All right. So we've gotten this, we've gotten that. Now this is create a square. Um, we have two more slides to create. So we're going to be really, really simple because we want the slides to be exactly the same. We want create square, create circle, create triangle. Format options is available to everybody, Jacqueline. If you don't see it, it's because it's being covered up. So first of all, you need to select an object. You either need to select a text box or a, um, an icon or, or something on the page. Okay, so select it first and then it's in line with the, all the other tools up at the very top. Your screen might be really small, so you might have to hit the little three dots, the more button, because right now my animate button is being um, hidden. So just look way over to the far right and you'll see three dots. All right, now I'm gonna create three more, two more slides, really quick and easily. I'm gonna select the slide in the left-hand pane. I'm going to right click and I'm gonna duplicate. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna duplicate. Now I have three slides that are all the same. They all say create square, right? So I just go to the second one in line with my table of contents that I haven't created yet. And we want create circle. We just change the text. The slides are exactly the same. And for those of you that know PowerPoint and have used Slides Deck, you already know this, understood. You know, we got some beginners in here. All right, now we've got three slides, all three the same. Uh, we're gonna put a square on the first one. You have a bunch of shapes up at the top of your screen. There's a, you know, a undo, redo, the print button, a zoom button, a little arrow. That little arrow is very important. Always remember where your little arrow is. We've got, we can add a text box, we can add images. And then right next to that, you're gonna see the shape tool. It's a circle square, select it. Then you get more shapes. You get shapes, you get arrows, you get call outs, you get equations. Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff here. So we want the square. Right here, I see a square, I'm gonna click it. I get the uh, crosshairs. And as I click, hold and drag down my screen, there we have a square. And I can move it anywhere I want. This is an object. If I want to, I can select it, find my format options. And now I can do all kinds of stuff with it. I can do a reflection on it. I could have the reflection uh, be really far distance from it. Okay, all kinds of different things you can do with format options. I don't, really don't want any of this stuff. I just wanted to show it to you. So there's a square. Am I gonna write down the steps that it took to take to do the square? No, that's up to you. <laughs> do it on your own slides. All right. I'm gonna go to my circle slide where it says create circle i'm going to go back to my shape tool i'm going to hover on shapes and in here i'm going to find somewhere a circle there it is there's also a circle down here but that's a flow chart okay so as you hover over the shapes in this shapes area they're going to give you names for them if you uh hover over them except, well no it's not doing it but um, in the, these are all flow charts way down at the bottom. So I'm going to choose this circle. Here we go. I got a circle. Now this circle is green, like the square. I don't want it to be green. I want it to be a different color. I want it to be, I really want it to be kind of really cool. I don't even want it to be in the theme. I'm going to select the object. I'm going to select my circle. I'm going to go to my paint bucket. All right. Within your paint bucket, you have a solid option and a gradient option. A lot of people don't know this exists either. I'm selecting gradient. And then I'm gonna select one of these. Boom, that one matches my theme. Look how cool that is. Ooh, nice, okay. All of your objects when you create them usually have a line around them or a border. They don't have to, or they could have a different color. So I've selected this circle object. I'm gonna to go to the pencil next to um, the paint bucket. I'm gonna click it. 
And notice I can make it transparent, which just means it doesn't exist, it's not there, or I can make it purple. Now you really can't see it. I mean, it, it kind of pops out to me a little bit, but I'm sitting right here. So I'm gonna select that object and I'm gonna leave it purple, but instead of one pixel, I'm gonna make it eight. So next to your pencil tool, you have a line thickener tool, <laughs> a line thickener, okay? Boom. So now we can make it as thick or as thin or um, a different color, anything you want. Okay. And we've also made this gradient. Gradient is a really cool tool. By the way, within the paint bucket, from when you get really, really uh, into creating your own shapes and everything, in the solid tab, you're going to see a custom button. And in the gradient tab, you're going to see a custom option. What that allows you to do is create your own gradient. So I could change this into anything that I wanted. Boom. That's a really ugly looking thing right there, but you get the idea. I'm going to hit undo. So it goes back. You can create your own gradients. And that also helps you when you're going to be creating images. And we're getting to that. We are getting to that. I promise you. All right, right here. Um, we, need, we need a triangle. So I'm going to go back to my shape tool. I'm going to go to shapes. I'm going to find a triangle. Now, which triangle do I want? Equilateral or right angle? I'm going to choose the right. Okay, so we got that. I know how to create a different color now. I like the gradient option. I'm going to choose a different gradient. I know now that I can change the border color. So I'm going to change the border colors just so it stands out a lot. Boom. There we go. Now I've got three slides with different shapes on them, right? I'm going to go back to my TOC. I'm going to go back to that second slide table of contents. Now you're going to want to watch this if you want to know how to create an ebook. Okay. I'm going to select the words create square. This, these two words together are going to be one link. These two words together are going to be one link. If I wanted to, I could just select one word. Then only that word would be a link. I'm going to select both of them in a line though, because this is easier for our students. They don't have to figure out which word is going to be the link. So I've selected that, those two words. Now I'm going to go up to the link tool to insert the link, or you can use your, your uh, keyboard and hit uh, Control K, or if you're on a Mac, Command K. Okay, I use this button right here, the link to it's the same thing, click it. Now everyone take your hands off your mouses and watch. This is where people get screwed up because they start scrolling down and they're looking for the link. You're not gonna find it. What you need to do is right underneath where it says paste a link or search, you're going to see a little option called slides in this presentation. Slides in this presentation. You need to select that arrow next to slides in this presentation. Never, ever, ever select next slide, previous slide, first slide, or last slide. Never do that. Always scroll down. You might have to use your mouse to scroll down a little bit and select the slide number that has the slide title on it. Why wouldn't you choose next slide? Because, well, let me explain that later. First, go ahead and, and um, we're, we're creating square. Let's see, we're going to connect to create square. So I want slide three, and then I apply. You notice the text color changes and it becomes underlined. That tells you it's a link. Do I have to keep it underlined? No. Can I change the color? Yes. Will it still stay a link? Yes. All right. Next link that I want to create is to create a circle, which is going to go to slide four for me. This presentation is being recorded and it will be posted on the OTAN website. I go up to the link tool. I'm going to select the slides in this presentation arrow. I'm going to scroll down until I see the slide that I want. Here it is, create circle, slide four, boom. And rinse and repeat. I'm going to select create triangle. I'm going to go up to the create link tool. I'm going to hit the 
arrow next to slides in this presentation. I'm going to scroll down until I see the slide that I want. Slide five, create triangle. Boom. When you get up to like 60 slides in a deck, <sighs> it's a lot of work. All right, just warning you ahead of time. Now, why didn't I select when I was um, creating the, the link for Create Square? You know, it, it's the next page. So why wouldn't I have selected next page? Because I might decide to add another slide in between the table of contents and the Create Square. If I select next slide, this will always go to the next slide. But right now it's going to slide three, create square. And I can see that on my screen when I just click my mouse in it. Okay, let's see what happens when I add a new slide in between this table of contents and the create a square page. Here's my table of contents. I'm gonna click in the words, create square. Now it's going to slide four. If I had told it to go to the next slide, it would have gone to this blank slide right here. Okay, so make sure that when you're creating your link, I'm just gonna type demo here so I can show it to you again. When you're creating your link, you're gonna select the word, you're gonna go to the link tool, select slides in this presentation, and just ignore the first four <laughs> options. All right, you're going to scroll down until you see the, um, the slide that you want, and then you're going to select it. There we go. Does anybody have any questions on how to create an ebook? Because we just did one. Yeah, it's only got a couple slides, but we just created an ebook. If you have any questions, put that in the, uh, the Q&A, okay? If I'm presenting a slideshow in Zoom with my class, can students edit the slide, add answers and responses? Barbara, you might want to think really closely about doing that first, okay? If you're going to be opening up a slide deck and sharing it with your students, I've just created one, okay? And I, create, I could create a short link for it, and I could have all of you come in here. And there are, I think, yeah, there's 110 people in here. So what would happen if I had all 110 of you typing on this slides deck, it's, it sounds really hard, doesn't it? <laughs> it's, it's just as hard with 20 people. It's just as hard. So I would think closely about doing that. Maybe assign your students a slide. You know, we have, okay, Barbara, you're number five. Kelly, you're number four. Uh, Jacqueline, you're number seven. Leah, you're number 10. Okay, so you all know your numbers and then you go to that slides number and then you do the voodoo that you want to do. Um, as we move the slides around, will the ebook link update? Yes, absolutely. The, only if you select the exact slide, <laughs> okay? That's, that's the key. You have to select the slide that it's going to be going to. How do you link the slide back to the TOC? Leah, I'm so glad you asked. So here's the thing. Um, when I'm on, let's say the square, okay? I need to have a, a button here so that my students can get back to the table of contents, right? So I get to choose any shape I want. So I'm gonna go back to the shape tool. Oh, and by the way, it doesn't have to be a shape. It could just be word. It could just be um, a text box because remember, text box is an object, it's a shape. I like using shapes though because I can type in shapes. So I'm gonna just select, boom. I selected one, I don't even know what I selected. Here we go, there's a shape. Oh, it's one with golden handles, okay. So now you can type in a shape. You just double click, double click in the shape, and then I'm gonna just gonna type TOC, return. How did I add a slide between slides? Um, I'll show you that next. So here's my TOC, okay? You know, it's a really big button, I wouldn't make that big button, but um, what you do is you select the object not the text, select the object itself so you see all the handles around it. Go to the link tool, go to slides in this presentation, scroll down until you see what you think should be the table of contents. I never did um, title that slide, but it's, it's slide two, demo create square, okay, right here. Select it and then apply. Now let's test it out. I'm gonna hit present, I'm gonna select 
the TOC return, and there it goes. Now, do I have to do that for every slide? Absolutely. Is there an easy way to do it? Oh, yeah. So what you're going to do is you're going to select this TOC return. We're going to copy. All I did was hit Control C. If you want to do it the hard way, select the object, then go to Edit, Copy. By the way, there it is, Control C. Okay. So I copy this. I'm going to go to the next slide, and then I'm going to hit Control V, and it pastes in exactly the same position with the link. I go to the next slide, Control V. It pastes exactly in the same place as it did with the, the first slide. Okay, so there we go. There's the TLC, and that's basically how you do a home button too, Kelly. Um, oh God, I forgot the question I was going to answer next. Oh yeah, yeah. So, um, what? How? How do you just in the middle of a slide deck? How do you? How do you uh, put a slide in the middle? What you do is you go to the left, left side. Okay, um, the left hand pane. You click in the middle, and you'll see a little uh, line appear. And that means that if you insert a slide, it will go there. Here it is. Okay. So we just inserted. How do you delete a slide once you've inserted it? You, there's a couple of ways to do it. The easiest way for me is to right click. And I, I right click because it makes me think. Okay. And then you would um, delete. Do I really want to delete it? It makes me think. So you could also um, select the slide and you'll see it get highlighted and you hit your backspace key. If you make a mistake, <gasps> control Z or use your undo button. Okay, how about page numbers? Page numbers are usually um, contained on the master slide. So I just happened to choose a theme that didn't have page numbers. I could actually do my own manually, one, two, three, four, and like that. But um, then when you add slides or put slides in between, they don't automatically change. So what you need to do is you go to slide, uh, edit master, or you go to view, master, and then you um, insert a page number on the master slide, and then all the other slides will follow suit. Okay, and I, I believe it's just the hashtag hashtag to put in a number. All right. Well, cool. Like yes. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, we have a request from a couple of folks. Could you show us just again one more time how you add that TOC button again? Sure. I'm going to delete this one and I'll show it to you again. So I'm going to just delete all of my TOC returns. I'm actually going to go up here now and I'm going to, um, I'm doing something that I, I should have done to begin with. I should have titled this slide. So I'm going to, Title this slide, Table of Contents. And all I did was select the text that was already there. There we go, and I'm gonna put it up at the top. So now, all things being what they are, this might work. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna create a button to anywhere we want. Okay, insert slide numbers. Yes, Leah, thank you. Uh, and that's on the master. So here we go. I'm going to, or is it on here now? Oh, look at that. Okay, we just learned something new today. They have added this slide numbers. This used to be only available in the, um, skip title slides, uh, in the master deck. There it is, boom. Thank you. There you go. Something else that they've added when you're on text, they've added this little plus sign next to the point size and the little minus sign next to it as well. So you can go up by one point and down by one point. That's new too. That's only, I think like a week old. All right, all right, table of contents. Uh, here we go. I'm gonna go to my shapes tool. <laughs> Sound effects for free. Uh, shapes tool, and we're going to just choose a button. All right, we can choose any shape we want. All right, I'm gonna choose this one this time. No idea what it is. Oh, it looks like a little teardrop. There we go. Okay. Uh, and, and then it, I, I want it to be a different color because I want it to stand out. Yeah, that is stand out. All right. And now I'm going to double click in it. Double click. And I get a little blinking cursor. And T-O-C. 
Oh no, I don't want it to look like that. If you don't want the text to look like something, you can go to format options, go to text fitting, and look at that. I can take away, oops, wrong object selected. I can take away the padding, and that will allow TOC to fit in the box. Oh my God, how great is that? How did I do that? I selected the object. I went to the text fitting option and I took out the padding. Come on, we've all done that, right? We've, we've created something and we've got the perfect word and it's, it, it, um, it goes down one space. And it's like, oh, I don't want that. <laughs> so you want to take away the padding. All right, so now we've got a shape and we've got the word or the, the letters TOC, okay? I'm going to make sure that that object is selected. I'm not selecting the text because that's a little too hard for the students. They have to be exactly on the text to go to the next or to click on that and then go to TOC. So I'm actually collecting the shape. All right, we've got the, the handles all the way around it. I'm gonna go to the link tool or command K. Here we go. Underneath where it says paste a link or search, I'm not gonna type anything. I'm going to let Google do the work for me. I'm gonna select the arrow key next to slides in this presentation. I'm going to scroll down until I see the page that I want. And it's actually slide two is my table of contents. Slide two is my table of contents. So I selected that from the list, then I hit apply. And then I can see it tells me, okay, we're linking to slide two, all right? Now, I want that to appear on the pages after this. So I select it, I copy, I go to the next slide, and I paste. I go to the next slide, and I paste. So now I have a TOC button that will go to my table of contents every time. All right, now, next up, I want everyone to go to File, New, presentation. Go to file, new presentation. This is another way to create a presentation after you've already created one. File, new presentation. Shady, I'm about to answer your question. Now, when you create a new deck, remember the first thing we want to do is name this. So I'm going to name this OTAN flip. Okay, <laughs> OTAN flip. Um, I don't need a theme at this point because all I'm going to show you right now is how to change a page layout. So as an ebook, someone, some people want the layout to look like a book. They don't want it to be landscape. They want it to be portrait. You can also make this a postcard. You could also make this a, a, a brochure. Okay, that's the other great thing about slides that people don't realize. It's not just a presentation. It's a bunch of different things all in one toolkit. So you need to change the page layout in order to do this. So we're going to go to File. We've got our slides deck open. We click the File button, and then we're going to go to Page Setup. It defaults to widescreen 16 to 9. Can you do certificates? Absolutely, you can do certificates. Um, so here I'm going to go two, I'm going to click instead of 16 to 9 or standard 4 by 3 or 16 to 10. All of these are HD formats so that if you're presenting online, it looks good. Okay. Or if you're doing video, yes, you're going to get a copy of this. Um, I'm going to hit custom. Now this should look form more familiar to us, right? So if I wanted to make this portrait instead of landscape, I would make this 8 by 11 or 10 and a half. Why do I, instead of doing a eight, eight and a half by 11? Because I want to give myself some space on either around the sides. Okay. So let's see what happens when I do this. I just made this. I went to custom file page setup custom instead of 16 to nine. I changed it to from whatever it was to eight. And by 10 and a half, you could also do centimeters, points, or pixels, okay? And then apply. There's no benefit except it's a little easier to, um, slides versus docs, except it's easier to put in pictures. And 
if it benefits you because you you like slides, then that's an added Benny. Okay. Um, so here, now we have a portrait layout instead of a, um, a landscape layout. Okay. So now this could be uh, page one of the booklet I'm going to create. And as I add new slides, I'm going to go ahead and hit my theme button up at the top because I want I want a little color here. There we go. Um, and you see how the layout has changed. Okay. As I add slides to it now, I could I could totally print this out. All right. I could totally print this out. You can actually send send this to a print shop. You could go to File. After you create your book, you go to File, Download as a PDF, a JPEG, or a ping. The JPEGs and pings are only current slides. But if you download this as a PDF, then send it to your print shop, they will be able to print it out. How do you add sounds? You're gonna to go to insert, and you're gonna to go to audio. And then you better have some audio on your screen or on your drive. You have to upload your audio. So can you create audio in slides? No. You cannot create audio in slides yet. I see that coming, but it's not there yet. So here's an audio file that I have. Now you're not going to be able to hear this. There we go. Um, but when it finally loads here, uh, you you get format options on it. So it can start playing on the click. It can you can position. You can do a lot, all the other things that you want or had on the other. Uh, objects that you selected, but you also get this audio playback. So you can loop it, you can hide the icon when presenting, but make sure you have this <laughs> automatically going so you don't have to, um, to worry about it. You can also set the volume on it. Okay, so yes, you can add audio, um, but it has to be in your drive. Can you add a GIF to animate the book? Yes, you can add animated GIFs. Um, you have to have, I would use Jiffy or Giffy, uh, G-I-F-F, -F, I forget the, the address. Maybe we'll have time at the end of this uh, to, to visit that. There is a, um, there's a, a free app that will do animated GIFs for you. Is there a way to have your presentation play automatically? Absolutely. You can do whatever you want. Uh, you would do that in the, whew, how would you do that? It would be in the transitions, okay? Or um, So you would have it, as soon as it opens, it starts playing, okay? Uh, if you don't want your students to click through it, you want it just to go in order and then loop back around, you can totally do that. Okay. Uh, the flip page. We've already gotten the horizontal layout, like a virtual, or actually it's already defaulted to that. I showed you how to do it, um, a page layout. All Google Slides will default to this layout here, to the landscape. Okay. Now, if you want a book, that looks like a book, you might have to create it, okay? So one way of creating it is to, and I'm looking at the slides deck that I created for this. We've gone through a lot, by the way. Um, one way of making things look like a book is just have the left side um, be a little, uh, a, um, a different color, right? So this, this object right here has, I used a paint bucket after I put in the, all the text. Um, I could make this stand out more, right? Blah. Blind me. <laughs> okay, we're not going to do that. All right, but it, it sets it apart. Okay, so that's one way of doing a book. Another way of doing a book, when you create a book, okay, and you want it to look like a book, and it kind of looks like it has pages, that takes a lot of finessing on the master slide. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you that. Um, but it's going to be quick, so please don't ask me to redo it, all right? I'm just going to show you this quick. It'll be in the video, but please don't ask me to redo this, okay? I am going to go to uh, one of the layouts here, and probably the title in two columns fits this way. It's the best way. I'm going to go to my, let's see, edit, oops, view master. Okay, so here's the master slide the master layout, all right? I'm gonna duplicate this because I don't wanna screw up that master. So here's the duplication. Now this one, I know I'm gonna need a lot of room because this is a book, so I'm gonna move the title up, 
and I'm going to move it over a little bit so that it's centered. Okay. I'm going to get rid of this graphic. I don't want that there. Boom. Now I've got two columns. I'm going to raise them up. Okay. And I'm going to move the one to the left over a little bit. Again, just watch. This will be all in the video. Okay. Now this slide is 10 inches wide. All right. And it is three, five and some odd inches wide, five something. Okay. I want to know where the exact middle is. I'm on the master slide from the ruler. I'm going to click, hold and drag and you'll see, I can see a little red line coming across. Okay. As soon as I get into the middle, wherever the middle is, the line will turn solid. Boom. There's my solid line. Or my, it turns into a hashtag or a hash line as it goes down. Same thing from the top. If I want to know where the exact middle is, as I drag this down, I'll see it turn, boom, solid color. 2.81, that's the middle of this slide. Okay? So I don't have to worry about, okay, five and three quarters divided by two, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. Just drag from the top from the ruler and it'll tell you where the middle is. Now I know where the middle of my slides is. I want to have just a little bit of space on one side of the middle and a little bit of space on the other side of the middle. This will make sense in a minute. Now, here comes the hard part. I want a, a long rectangle. I'm going to make a long rectangle. And I'm not actually going to do the full thing because this takes, this took me a long time to figure this out. All right, so it's in the middle. Now I'm going to use my format options. Okay. I am going to have a drop shadow and I make the drop shadow when I first do this, a really God awful pink and I make the distance way out here. So I know where it is. So here's the angle. Where's it going? There it is. You can see it on the screen. It's way over on that side on the left but I want it on the right. So how do I get it there? I just keep moving the angle button. There it is. It's getting close to what I want. I want it to be lined up with the line. There we go, right about there. I could finesse it a little bit, but we don't have time. Now, I want the distance to come back in. I don't want it way far out. I want the little pink line to go back towards its owner. Okay, and instead of pink, I want it to be a gray. And this object has lines around it, which I don't want. So I'm going to make it transparent. Now, I don't know if you can see that really well, but now you can see that it's kind of got a part and it's a little shadow on one side, right? This is why Melinda Deliver sleeps. Yes. So here we go. We have what is starting to be the line down the center of a page. This line is colored a, a solid color. I'm going to select the object again. I can make, I'm going to select the object again. I can make this transparent as well. So when you um, go to custom, it's going to tell you, okay, here, here's that color that you wanted, but now I have transparency options. So if I transparentize it a little bit, now we've got that line going down with a little bit of shadow. And when we go back to our slide, this one, yeah, there's the line. Okay. Along with the guidelines that are on the master. So I can take the guidelines off if I want, but you can see it's barely visible right now. And I would have to finesse that a lot in order to make it a book. Okay. Um, you can make your book as big or as small as you want because you go to page layout and make it as big or as small as you want. Okay, we need to get to the drawing aspect because drawings will make your slides pop. They'll make it fun. They'll make it easy for your students to follow along. Okay, so we're gonna go into the drawing aspect of slides. Um, I've already shown you where the shape tool is. I'm gonna go back to the table of contents here real quick. Yeah, the shapes. Okay, so I'm on section five, the shapes. Okay, go to the next slide. Here are all the shapes right here in the handout that you can view. And you're, well, Melinda, if I can only view it, how am I going to be able to copy those and, and use them? You're not. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you another handout with just these shapes. Okay. There are, um, let's see, these shapes here. We've got the flow chart. What I did, because I, when I looked at this little tool up here and then you look at shapes and arrows and whatever, I could never figure out which is the one that I want, right? Or I couldn't remember if this had that and what I could do with this. So what I did was I made them big for me. And then I, people started asking me for them. All right, I guess we're all getting, you know, we're, we're getting kind of older and, and it's easier to see things when it's bigger, right? So all of these shapes will be available to you if you have the magic. Here's the magic. So um, this is another bit.ly. This one you can make a copy of, okay? This is shapes to share. So I believe I gave you all view options to it. When you open it up, you can go to file, make a copy. Uh, can you use the ebook for a tutorial? Absolutely, Marisol. That's exactly what the, that preview is for. The, the one that I showed you um, that I was going through like section five, that's totally what it's for. That's a tutorial. And I don't want you to make copies of it because I'm changing it all the time. I'm updating it. I'm adding sections to it. So I'm treating you like students. Uh, you don't get to copy the book. You have to come back to the book to see if anything's been added. What I want you to do when you get here is go to file. So you're going to click on the file menu and you're going to make a copy of the entire presentation, not one or two slides, the entire presentation. So it's bit.ly slash shapes, the number two, share. Okay, so come on in, grab a copy of this. After you um, get it, you will see all of the shapes, okay? Now here's, while you're copying, listen, okay? Don't screw up your shapes slides, all right? Don't start coming in here and making the circle bigger or smaller or whatever. Make a copy of it, right? So I'm going to make a copy. I'm going to go to this shape right in the middle. What is this, like a trapezoid? All right, I'm going to select the trapezoid. I'm going to control C. And then slide seven is a blank. I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to do anything I want with this. The trapezoid on slide three, which is where I copied it from, is still there. Now I can do anything I want with it on slide seven, and I still have my master. Okay, so I can make it bigger. By the way, on shapes, if you have a gold handle that appears, move it and see what fun you can have with it. Wing, 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 wing. Okay, some of the, uh, the shapes have gold circles on them. So when you click it to copy, note that. Note that. All right. Hey, um, Melinda? Yeah. We've got, uh, it's 1026. We've got about four minutes left. You know what? I'm going to go about mm, 10 minutes long. Okie dokie. <laughs> I'm just warning everybody. We're going to go to 1035. <laughs> okay. 1040 at the, at the latest. So you've got a shape here. All right. You've, you've selected a shape. Uh, you can do, you can, you can rotate it. There's a little handle up at the top of your shape where you can rotate around. Uh, I'm going to make, give you a little uh, hint here. If you hold the shift key down while you are rotating your image, it will go exactly 15 degrees at one time. How cool is that? Using the shift key as well. If you use the shift key and use your arrow key at the same time, you can just nudge that shape just a little bit at a time. Just, just one little more little pixel instead of trying to figure out, okay, no, no. Uh, 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 okay. Use your shift arrow keys to move your objects. Okay. If you've um, made your own slides deck, scroll down, scroll down to slide eight. Okay. When you get to slide eight, you're going to see some instructions. Um, it's going to tell you to open a blank slide, then select a drop down arrow, blah, 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 blah. This is for you to do on your own. What I want you to do is go to slide nine. I've created a starter kit for you. There are two really cool tools called the curve tool and the polyline. So next to the shape tool, you're going to get all kinds of lines next to it, right? There's a line tool, okay? Polyline and curve, they do different things. So on slide nine, if you double click on 
one of the shapes, if you double click on it, you'll notice some little purple dots appear. And you can drag those little purple dots to do anything you want, like make a horse. Okay, this shape up here, the one with the with more of the um, with the purple dots, the more purple dots you have, the better off it's going to be. This one right here, right here, this one that has all the little squigglies, right, all the little purple lines. When I double click, there's a lot of little purple dots. This I copied and I made this horse out of it. What I think looks like a horse. I don't know. You might think it looks like something else, right? But this used or this rather used to look like this okay so this horse used to look like this little pink thing all right um i make the line pink so i can see it it's easier for me to see okay it's also easier to copy or trace i'm going to use the word trace so how do i trace i'm going to show you how to trace and then i'm going to show you how to do the video go everyone go to the insert button up at the top your uh is underneath the the handout google shapes name and yours probably says copy of handout google shapes go to insert and then select or go to image and then search the web we're not going to go anywhere we're going to stay right here on the slides deck you should notice that something happened on the right hand side you're going to be searching a google image all right i want you to search it should be blinking right now. Your cursor should be blinking. I want you to search for silhouette cat. Silhouette cat. Make sure you spell silhouette correctly and then hit your enter key. A bunch of images are going to come off to the side. Okay. Now, I want you to select one of these cats doesn't matter which one you select. I want you to just click on one of them. Make it an easy one, okay? <laughs> not, not, not something where he's licking his lips or, or his uh, paw or something. Um, once you select a cat, hit the word insert that it appears at the bottom. Give the magic some time. Some of us are on slower Wi-Fi. And then you'll see the cat appear, okay? Once the cat appears, drag one of the curves over to the cat. And you'll notice that the curve is actually probably behind the cat. Um, so we're going to bring that to the front. You have to bring it to the front so you can see it. The squiggle is behind the cat. Okay, so I'm just going to push the cat behind the squiggle. Or I'm going to bring the squiggle above the cat. I've got the cat selected. So I'm going to go to the Arrange tool. I'm clicking on Arrange. I'm going to Order. O-R-D-E-R. I'm going to find and then hit send to back. All right. Now here's where it gets a little funky. You have to zoom in so you can see what you're doing. There's a zoom tool next to your selection tool. I've made reference to this before. This is a very important tool. Your select tool is the most important tool on this toolbar. Select. Okay. I want you to hit zoom, but remember where that select tool is. Select zoom and then go into your cat a little bit one or two clicks you don't need much more than that and then go back and hit your select tool now double click on your line your squiggles and start moving the points around the cat and you can see what i'm doing here i'm moving the points around now the curve is a little weird it's kind of like a rubber band you just start moving your points. Don't worry about what it's looking like. Just move your points where you know they're eventually going to go. And eventually everything will work its way out. But just think of it as a rubber band. You can go in and, and tweak it a little later. By the way, every once in a while I lose my points. So I have to double click on my lines again and get my little purple dots back. If you don't see your purple dots, just double click on them. And you can see what I'm doing here. Now this is going to take a while. All right, so you can use a squiggle that you've already made. I'm going to delete my squiggle. I'm going to go up to the line. I'm going to go to curve. You notice I have the crosshairs. Now I'm going to click and I'm going to keep clicking around this cat. Click, 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 click. Every once in a while, when you have slow Wi Fi, 
you will lose or it will stop clicking. So you want to get as many clicks as you can, but, and then you, you always end where you started like that. Okay. Double click on it. You can see all the, the little, um, little purple dots. I'm going to make this transparent. So the paint bucket, I'm clicking on the transparent. So it makes it clear so I can see the, the, the image that I'm trying to trace. Okay, and then I can manipulate my purple dots. Now this is a little easier to do, but if you're on slow Wi-Fi, it's really good to have a pre-made squiggle all ready to go. Yes, it makes it harder in the long run, but I'm telling you on slow Wi-Fi, you will get frustrated beyond your wildest imagination when you're almost done, you know, connecting the dots and then boom, it blows out or it stops. Okay, and it will do that on you. So I have a couple of squiggles that are like, there's like 100, <laughs> there's 100 points on it. And another one, you know, I, I've got varying levels of it. So you might want to just create some squiggles on your own. The other line tool is the polyline. Um, by the way, when you're zoomed in, you have to zoom out sometimes. Make sure you hit your select tool after that. So here's a polyline starter. Um, this is a feather duster that when I first created it, um, one of my colleagues um, told me it looked like a claw and she was right, it did. So I had to add, I had to keep adding all of these shapes. And what I did was I just created one shape. That's all I did. But then I copied and pasted it and I, um, I rotated them a little bit. So that when I take them out, like I just did, I put them back in and then I have a feather duster. And all I'm doing is hitting control Z. Oops. So that you can see that. Okay. Uh, so you've got uh, that as a starter kit. If you want to try doing that, you've also got on uh, slide 11. So I've, I've given you a hand, <laughs> all right? If you double click on it, you'll see all the little points that went around there to make that hand. Um, but what I want you to do is try and fix it. Okay. And just read the instructions. I mean, you can take this and put it anywhere you want. Also, at the very last end there, I got thinking about, all right, all of you are doing, um, you're teaching your students how to use computers and how to do this and how to do that. What's the advantage of making your own squiggle cat instead of using the original silhouette? Bev, I'm glad you asked because I'm about to show you that. Here's a keyboard. What's the advantage of using my own keyboard that, I that I've created? And it took me a long time to do this, so I'll admit that. But what's the advantage of using this over using a clip art? Because I, when I want to show my students um, how to do control, shift, and the letter Z, we're going to pretend it's right here. I'm not exactly sure where it's at. There we go. When I create the object, I can make it anything I want. I can also take this entire thing. When you create your objects, Oops, selected too much. When you create your objects, you can select them all and then you can make them smaller. And it keeps its aspect ratio if you're holding down your shift key. That shift key is a magic button, I'm telling you. So you can make it as big or as small as you want. I'm gonna hold down my shift key and I'm making it bigger. That is the advantage over using this instead of clip art. If clip art works for you, go for it. Absolutely use it. For you advanced people, I'm gonna show you one thing and then, then I gotta get out of here. Um, I'm gonna select, what am I gonna select? I'm gonna select something easy. This uh, feather duster, okay? I'm gonna hit copy. If you go to drawings.google.com, D-R-A-W-I-N-G-S.google.com, I'm doing it quick. Please don't ask why or ask me to repeat PNG. I'm just naming this PNG, okay? Now I copied the feather duster. I'm gonna paste it. I'm going to position it somewhere on this canvas is what we're gonna call it in Google Draw. Down at the bottom left-hand or right-hand corner of my Google Draw, if I click, I see these little hashtag marks. Draw it up so you can see it a little more. See right here, down, way down here. I know you probably can't see it, but this lets me resize my canvas. Okay, 
after I do that, I'm going to view this at 100%. There we go. After I do that, I can go to File, Download, Ping, so that when I, when it downloads to my desktop, I can insert it into my uh, my slides deck. I could insert it into my PowerPoint now. I can insert it into anything because it's a ping because I've downloaded it. If I want to make this red and then download it as a ping, I can do that. And then my ping will have a red feather. So that's real quick and easy what you can do. Now, videos. I'm going to show you that and then I got to go. <laughs> We're going to insert. You have to insert videos from YouTube or from your drive. So when you go to insert, select video, and if they are on your Google Drive, you'll see them listed. They, they are pre-listed for you. They have to be MP4s, or this one is w, w, web, WebM, so it has to be web format, okay? So if your videos are there, you select it, it will insert. Notice the format options comes up, and then I can autoplay when presenting, or I can mute audio. I just want them to see the video, but I don't want them doing anything. I can also start them at a certain point. So I could drag this, let's see, where do I want them to start? Uh, maybe, maybe right here, right? Use current time, boom. It will start at that point in time. I don't want them to watch the whole video, I just want them to watch the last three minutes. I would start it at that. Now, can they rewind and play it again when it's on a slide deck that you've given them uh, access to? Absolutely, they can. Um, so what? <laughs> okay the whole entire link opens up. How do we isolate one video that we want them to see and not the entire website? Because uh, you're sharing a website, not a video. So you need to find out where that video is at and then put it on your slides deck. So again, you have to do YouTube. So you go insert video and it only gives you um, the options of Google Drive and YouTube here. Now, by URL, yeah, you could do that, but that means you're probably pasting the whole website. So if you did that, that's why. You need the link to the video. Is a recording from your phone the correct format? It depends on what your, fo your phone um, saves as. So um, if it does, let's see, if it does it, uh, the MP4, then yes. If you upload that into Google um, and it becomes and it you see the uh, the the extension and it's MP4, yes. Melinda. Yes. Just one thing um, about um, Shadia's question. I think she was confused because the video is actually how to create a Google account on this website. It's not the website itself. It's oh. a video of the website. Right. This is a video that I created. Okay, and this is how to create a Google account. That this is a video that's on my Google Drive, <laughs> all right? Yeah, I mean, it's showing the Google, um, the Google website, but that's, that's because I was taking a screenshot of it. Um, what was I using? I think I was using Screencastify for this. So Screencastify is a good Chrome extension. Um, Loom is another one. We have videos on those that you can watch. I believe they're posted on the OTAN website, and I'm gonna stop sharing. Lots of things you can do in Google Slides. Think out of the box. Remember when we changed that page layout? Think postcard. What a great project for your students. Um, think, uh, there's already a template, cookbook. Have all of your students, you know, create 40 slides or however many students you have that have the cookbook template to it. And then uh, have them go in and say, Anthony, you're slide five. Um, Pablo, your slide seven. Uh, Sharon, your slide six. You know, and just assign them slide numbers. They can only, or you tell them they're only supposed to go to their slides. And then they put in a recipe, a family recipe. Okay. Uh, you can make newsletters. Uh, you could make um, flyers, brochures. We actually made a, or I made a CAEPT tap brochure using Google Slides because we didn't have the money to buy somebody's time who had um, the, uh, what was, uh, the, 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 I'm trying to think of the, the Adobe Connect, no, 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 Adobe, 
Photoshop. There we go. So we, we didn't have the time. We didn't have the money. So I used, we used the, the, Google, um, the Google Slides, right? So it can be, just think out of the box. If you can put a picture on it and you can think of that as a project, you can use Google Slides and draw.